right, good to see everyone here. Everyone's in the back row. In the shade. Uh, you guys sure you aren't Baptist? I mean, you guys are just automatically... I know it's in the shade, right? So I'll just keep... Do a Tim Conway thing. All right. Appreciate your prayer, prayers and thoughts for me uh, this past week. Of course, getting over COVID. Uh, piece of cake. Actually, uh, I had a real mild case. My heart goes out to those who really suffered uh, through COVID. So I don't have any really glorious stories to tell. I was locked up in the room, like the high tower, and uh, my wife slipped food under the table, under the door for me. Yeah, we saw pictures of it. Looked yummy. Yeah, I, I decided that. I was gonna go alternative medicine, so I went with chicken wings, whoopie pies, and meatballs as the cure, and it worked. So I, I, I'm convinced I'm gonna need a booster. You know, probably about once a week, a whoopie pie will keep it keep it away. So, but uh, so I really appreciate you guys' prayers and thoughts. Um, also, because I was supposed to be actually speaking at a Christian camp this week, or last week. And because of COVID, I wasn't, I couldn't go. So I turned around and uh, talked to the director. And what he did was he swapped out a week. So the speaker was supposed to be for this week covered for me. So actually, I'm going off to camp this week. So pray for me because camp is pretty high energy, and I I feel pretty good, but I, I'm still a little off. Does that make? More, more than usual. <laughs> Feel the love. So, um, I quite wanted to have the zip. I was bored, so uh, I did decorate the church for a vacation Bible school because no one was going to be around there. So, I try to keep isolated from people and try to do everything. Uh, so, vacation Bible school is the week of the 27th, uh, 25th to the 29th. And so, uh, I'm going to be looking for snacks and all that people who are willing to help out during the day from 10 to noon um and so if you guys can come and kind of organize head kids up the plan is i'll be out of town until friday night saturday morning or late morning early afternoon i'd like to sort of canvas uh stockton springs the village with flyers uh if you guys have been out about recently it's good to see uh there's more and more kids showing up in town and a lot of them, I don't know who they are. And so Saturday, we're going to go around and just kind of shake hands and just kind of invite people out and see if we can wrestle some kids for that following Monday. So if you're interested in doing that, let me know. I'll be at the church. I don't want to be too early. Uh, let's see, 11, 12, uh, 11 o'clock, 11 o'clock at the church. Yeah, yeah. If you guys are interested in help canvas the area. Like, it shouldn't take that long. We'll split up the town in a few ways and just kind of go out and uh, hand out the invitations and just really kind of gear things up for that. So a lot's going on. So pray for strength and encouragement, all those things. Um, this morning, we're not going to, you know, usually at church, we pass a plate. I'm not going to do that. It's just kind of awkward here. So um, the, the basket up front here is for the offering. So help us out in that because uh, you guys know budget-wise, you know, things are tight. So we uh, want to make sure it's still available up there as well. Let's see. Uh, if I'm going to camp, that means Mark, where's Mark, Mark, Bradstreet's Street's in charge, him and Zach. So if you got any problems, those guys are the guys to call this week. And they don't want to get bored, so call them a lot, no. But, uh, so if anything goes going on, they'll have my contact information. It's not that far away, it's only a couple hours away, so I'll be back, be able to come down for that. Um, also, the 30th is two things. What? Yeah, midweek, I'll be just like last week. We're not going to have that. Right? You are okay with that, Paul? Yeah, so like that. I'm going to try to do online, but I don't know if that's going to work up at camp. So what? Uh, no, River Life Bible Camp up by Howland. Up in Maxfield. You know, you know where Maxfield's at? Oh, that's right, Danny, right? Yes. <laughs> Five to twelve. Five to twelve. So, uh, anything else? Let's see. The thirtieth, the end of the month, is Marion Fisher's uh, memorial service 
Celebration of Life is going to be at the church. That is at 1030. Uh, you guys are all invited for that. There's going to be a sort of a light luncheon afterwards. So I encourage you to come out for that as well. Um, also, there's a sign-up sheet up front here. Uh, Mary Jane has been kind of heading up, trying to organize food for it. So if you'd like to help bring something, uh, Mary Jane can fill you in on that. There's a sign-up sheet. Are you looking for anything in particular, Mary Jane? Uh, yeah, I've got it on the sign-up sheet, what I need. Okay. Right, thank so, bigger items, any, any of that, uh, see that. Also, I'm making a plug. Uh, it seems like we're packing everything into January. How about uh, July? Uh, 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 yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's COVID brain fog. Yeah. I've been telling my wife that. I've been using that all week long, you know, so uh, if I miss anything. Uh, but yeah, end of July. On the 30th is also Harbor Days. And if you guys have been involved in Harbor Days or not, um, typically we set up the tent down here. Uh, I bring down the popcorn machine. We hand out popcorn and just kind of good PR for the church. Um, I got the funeral until probably about noon time then after noon time i'll come be down here and then also i get to do my annual going to the dumpling booth you think Ooh. that's advisable after covid yes yeah. yes what? <laughs> i was gonna say it flushes all the way it's a cleansing it's a cleansing <laughs> and that's like way far away so i'll be really but anyways um but Harbor Day starts at 10 o'clock, and so if I would like to know if someone would be willing, or a couple of people would be willing to kind of man the table, just kind of like I said, we got some stuff about the church, pop, run the popcorn machine just until I get here, and so if you're, you know, because I know a lot of the churches will be going to the funeral, and so if you don't know Miriam Fisher, or you know, not going to plan to attend the funeral, if you'd like to help out with that, help, you know, talk to me, and I'll, I'll get things geared up for you and just kind of hold the fort until I get back down here. But it's a great opportunity. Usually I come down here and do some balloon animals and hand out popcorn. It's just a good opportunity for us to represent the church uh, and get everyone cut passing through. So if you're interested in helping out with that, see me. All right, so there's a lot of announcements. A lot of things are going on. July is filling up, it's flying fast. And so um, with all that said and done, did I miss anything? I missed a week. I feel like I'm, I missed everything. By the way, I don't know if you guys know, I was gone last week, so I don't know if you guys knew I <laughs> Did you mention that? But PJ, now, I'm, I'm, now see, Phil Dow, hopefully he did a good job. Um, I know I know Phil. We, I know him well enough, I call him PJ. So we've known him for a long time. And so I told him, I said, be careful with the stories that he tells. So I don't know what he said. No, he did a good job. He knew me before I was a pastor. Oh. Oh. Uh -oh. Yeah, that long ago. So... All right. Um, what about the sheet for today? Did you mention that? The sh yes, thank you. Uh, Lowe's done a good job of trying to organize some things. There are, uh, what we're going to do this morning is we're going to have the service. We're going to head over to the baptism and then lunch. So, Pat, stick around if you guys have something to share. Here's the table so you can put all the items that you want to share onto the table. Anything on that table is free for all. So, um, and then after that, all in the afternoon, um, Flo has things for a, a three-legged race. There's a cornhole. There's a wiffle ball. Uh, if you guys want to play that, there's a ladder golf, uh, croquet, croquet uh, volleyball. So there's a whole bunch of different activities and all that. Flo's been gracious enough to kind of figure out where some of these things are to kind of organize that. So um, if you want something in the right, right direction, Flo is your gal. She'll, she'll, she'll find you something to do. There's no excuse to be bored. Or if you just want to find a shady place, I think you guys already found that. So enjoy yourselves and all that, okay? Um, let's see, I have a couple more sheets. Lauren, can you say, is it, Judy, I think, do you have a, who needs a, who needs a paper? One, two, okay, I have three. So have them fight over them. All right. So, with all that said and done, I think we're all ready to get started here. Um, great is thy faithfulness. You should have the words in there. You share with the person next to you. And uh, some of it you guys probably already know. So, uh, three verses of great is thy faithfulness. Oh, I, my wife needs to be clamped.
Father, we thank you for your faithfulness. Your love for us never fails. And Lord, we are here this morning to really celebrate uh, your your creation, Lord, a reflection of that glory that you just shared with us this morning. I pray you bless us this day. We, Lord, you've already given us this beautiful weather, Lord. We thank you for the, the waters, Lord, we, for the baptisms we can have after this. For the church family, Lord, we can be here. And Lord, just it's so good. I just missed the family last week. And it's so great to be together, Lord, with people that we love and care for. Uh, Lord, this gives a, a foretaste of heaven being our, in our presence this morning. Lord, we ask this in your name. Amen. Amen. All right. Uh, what can wash away my sins? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Can you turn yourself up? Or, you know? Okay. Oh, yeah, a clamps. Oh. You're useful. I was say, if my wife ever gets more strength in her hands, that won't be needed. Because I'm the, I'm the jar opener in the house. Never mind. <laughs> Thank you. 
been off a little bit and so i woke up at three o'clock this morning and i was like i can't sleep so i was tossing and turned and so i went downstairs lay down for a little bit woke up to torrential rain this morning did anyone up this morning when it rained yeah it, it, it came down and the first thought was my truck windows are down <laughs> my second thought is oh well <laughs> <laughs> like, I ain't going out there. So, it, so it stopped. The Lord's really giving us a gorgeous day for this. Of course, we're down here because of baptism. And, you know, those, those, this is just one of those events that we look at as a church that unites us together. I'm curious, how many of you guys have been baptized? If you didn't put your hand up, we need to talk. But then you become the unity of being baptized together in the body of Christ. And uh, it's so neat to see those who step forward to follow in those footsteps. And so we're here this morning to encourage them on in their walk with the Lord. And it should just give us a sort of a, a shiver in our quiver, if you will, or it is kind of a thrill that we see people being obedient. Because, folks, we need that today, don't we? Yes, yes. I mean, we need people who are saying, yes, Lord, I love you. Yes, Lord, I will follow you. I will follow you no matter what. And uh, the world doesn't make it easy. But we're here to follow him. So, uh, it's just excited to be here. Uh, glad you guys have decided to be a part of all this as well. Um, Dolores, you have a song, right? Yes, I do. Dolores came up and goes, Pastor, can I sing? I don't know. I, I said, well, I don't have an extra mic. She goes, I don't need it. <laughs> so where would you like to stand? Right where you are. All right, I will move. Well, you don't have to. I can stand over here. Oh, no, I don't know. No, 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 it's no, 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 no. We'll sing a duet. No, 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 I wouldn't do that to you. I wouldn't do that to you. <laughs> One day I was wondering, what's it all about? Life is full of heartbreak, restlessness and doubt, and a gentle Pointed me to heaven and wrote my name above. I know where I'm going and who I'm gonna see. I have a friend named Jesus waiting there for me. He has given something that only he could give. Gave his life in payment so that I could live. There are many mansions he's preparing there that could not be purchased by a millionaire. Streets of gold that glitter, gates of pearly white. In a day. Where there is no night I know where I'm going And who I'm gonna see I have a friend named Jesus Waiting there for me He has given something That only he could give He gave his life in payment so that I could live. Friend, if you are searching for a better way, I'm recommending Jesus. Trust in him today. He will give life meaning like no other can. Come and travel with me to the promised land. I know where I'm going and who I'm gonna see. I have a friend named G. 
Jesus waiting there for me. He has given something that only he could give. He gave his life in payment so that I could live. Beautiful. Yeah. Thank you, Dolores. <laughs> On the front, uh, I didn't know if, if how many of y'all would have your Bible, so I gave you the, the scripture where we're going to be this morning in the front of your bulletin there. Um, if you have your Bible, it's Romans chapter 6. And um, before I get into that, um, someone asked me about my t shirt. Uh, I, I hope you like it. It's Dr. Springs Community Church. Uh, ordinary people serving an extraordinary God. Um, if you want one, let me know. Um, actually, I found a lady that is in Hamden who uh, you know made for ten dollars a piece. Wow. So if you're interested in that, then it's up to extra large, it's ten dollars, and it's two dollars for every large after that. Uh, but if you're interested in that, let me know, uh, and then I'll put an order in, and we'll get a few T-shirts out. Uh, they're pretty comfy. Ten bucks can't beat that. So. And just to get some PR with the with the church as well. So, um, with all that said and done, in, in Romans chapter six, you know Paul talks about a lot about grace, and grace is a wonderful thing. Grace is God giving us something we don't deserve, Amen. right? I don't deserve His love, but He loves me anyways, right? It's not because I'm lovely. Well, you know, during COVID, I got a little grumpy. I don't know about you, but I, no. if you get a little grumpy when when you a little under the weather, if you will. Uh, I didn't feel like I was that grumpy, but if you talk to my wife, she'll tell you I'm a miserable, sick person. <laughs> now, wait a minute, where you judge, right? I, I, I'm just curious, because I, I, I figured out there's really two types of sick people in the world. How many are kind of like, I'm sick, I want to be babied? How many want to be babied, cared for, all that? Yeah, my wife is. Like when she had COVID, she was up and she was calling me every five minutes. Can you do this? Can oh, you do that? Are you, you know, talk to me. I'm lonely. You know, how are you doing all this? Uh, remind me of all the things I was supposed to do. So you got those kind of kind of people who, you know what? It's my chance. I, I need, I want to be baby. And that's fine. Right? Um, how many people are like, lock me in the room, leave me alone. I'll come out when I'm done. That's me. I'm just like, I'll just shut in the room. You know, don't eat, don't drink. I'll slither out one way or the other, right? <coughs> so, so, um, so I say I self isolate. So if I'm grumpy, just you know, you come to my space. But God loves us, and even though we're not lovely, God loves us. God cares for us, so we don't deserve it. On top of that, God gives us blessings that we don't deserve. Right? In this world, really, we don't deserve anything. We really don't. We don't deserve this beautiful day that we have today. Yet God is gracious enough to allow us to have this on this day. Um, right? God, if, if you really start with that premise, right? God, I don't deserve anything. Then anything I get is a blessing. And that really changes our attitude. Because sometimes we get sort of like selfish little children. Where I deserve this. Right? I remember uh, a couple of years ago uh, on YouTube, there was a, a sensation. There was a girl who turned 16, and her parents bought her a Mercedes convertible. Yeah, there's all kind of people. Not, you know, not, not my hometown. And, uh, and so, anyway, what they did is they blindfolded her. They brought her down, and the parents were all excited. They go up there. It was this gorgeous convertible. They pull the, the thing off her eyes, and she looks at it. And she throws her hands on her hips. She goes, you know I don't like blue. She goes, I have nothing blue that it goes with. And she stormed off. And she went on and uh, she had a video that went viral of how uncaring her parents were because they bought her a, a blue car and they know she wanted a red one. You say, boy, that... It's interesting because the story unfolded that actually mom and dad actually went and traded it in, took a loss, and bought her a red convertible. And I'm like, 
I was like, I was like, good thing she's not my child. Because, because she wouldn't be getting a Mercedes convertible. <laughs> you know, but that's what they're saying, right? But I'm like, wait a minute, you need to be thankful for what you got. Amen. And as God's children, we gotta be careful. We don't become so ungracious and unthankful for all the blessings God give us that we become like those spoiled little children. And so Paul wraps things up here in chapter 5, goes into chapter 6 in here. He starts talking about, look, shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? If God is forgiving us, right? If God will forgive my sin, therefore let me sin. Woohoo! I'll go out because I know God's going to forgive me. And they're taking advantage of God's grace. And Paul says, no. Oh, no, 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 no. Right? He goes, they should it never be? Certainly not, verse 2 says. He says, how shall we who died to sin live longer in it? And Paul picks up this theme of, of death and life. That when we give our lives to the Lord Jesus Christ, a magical thing happens. Is that through his death, I'm forgiven. That through his blood, I have the redemption and forgiveness of sin. Is that the punishment I deserve? I like to explain this to kids when I go into the gym. I say, imagine, you know, little Susie or little Bobby or... I said, imagine if you turn around and the next time you got in trouble. That I gave you a card and said, have your parents call me and the pastor will come and take your punishment. How many of you think that'd be a great deal? And they're like, yeah, that'd be a great deal. <laughs> yeah, my daughter's like, yeah, all right, I'm, I'm all for that. That's what Christ did for us. The penalty we deserve, he paid for. The Bible says the wages of sin is death. It's death. And he talks about as Christians, right? The old man is crucified with Christ. I'm not who I used to be. I'm not who I used to be. And through his grace and through his forgiveness, I can become something new. I'm a new creature in Christ. Amen. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. new. So the Christian life is about living. And that's what he talks about here. Look what he says. This is, or do you not know that as many of us who were baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? He brings in this theme of baptism. Now, in just a few moments, we're going to head down into the waters. Now, we have experienced baptism. We've watched it. Typically, typically what happens, I haven't lost anyone yet, is that we go into the water, and the person goes under the water. And then we bring them back up. And then it represents Christ's death, his burial, and his resurrection. He comes Amen. back up. Now, we associate with that, that Christ died according to the scripture. He was buried according to the scripture. And praise God, he rose again in newness of life. Amen. You know, one of the great things that's going to be in heaven is there will be no more funerals. Amen. I think out of all the ministries of being a pastor, one of the hardest things is saying goodbye. <laughs> Seeing the grief that's in the wake. Pastor Rose, who was pastored here in the church, I've had the opportunity to read his book. Yeah. In the end, his wife had passed away. And he talks about how death is a graduation for the person going home. But it's miserable for us who are left behind. We deal with the hurt and the pain. We still deal with the sin and the brokenness. We deal with all those things here on this earth. And if the person who dies a believer, praise God that they're healed and whole and they're up with their Savior. But death is so final. I've done hundreds of funerals and not, and guess what? My, 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 my success rate on funerals is much better than my success rate in weddings. Every funeral that I have done is stuck. I don't know if that's funny or not, but it's, they say dead. Final death is that finality of it all. 
and he brings that down and ties about us when we get into the waters of baptism, that we die to our old self. The old man is gone. And then we raise in newness of life. And he talks about it here. Therefore, we are buried with him, verse 4, through baptism into death, just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we also should walk in newness of life. Let me tell you something. When we give our life to the Lord, that's not the end of the journey. That's just the beginning. Amen. That's just the beginning. That we had this Christian adventure, this new life that we are to live out and, and explore daily. This newness of life. What does it look like to be a Christian? What does it mean to walk with him and talk with him along life's way? Right? It's the adventure. And some days I'm great at it, and other days not so good. But praise God, I can be who he wants me to be. In this newness of life going forward. Verse 6, it says, knowing this that our old man is crucified with him, that the body of sin might be done away with, that we should no longer be slaves to sin. For he who has died has been freed from sin. We're free from it. Now that we don't stumble, now we still struggle. But that's not who I am anymore. You know, in a couple weeks, I'm be heading out to, to Minnesota and for my stepfather's funeral at the end of August. And family's interesting because some of you are around family a lot. I'm not. I, I've spent most of my adult life away from family. I get along great with my family. They're all like 1,200 miles away. <laughs> but it's so interesting that when you get together with families, and I don't know if your family dynamic works like this or not, or maybe it's just because I'm not around them enough, but you ever been around family and all of a sudden you start reminiscing about the good old days and then it turns into a fight or a bickering <coughs> you start digging up all the old stuff right I, often I, I feel like when i get together with my siblings all of a sudden i feel like i'm you know seven years old again you know do you remember the time when you like let it go right i'm not that person anymore and sometimes the people in our lives that we've known the longest try to drag us back, try to identify us back to the old man. I'm not that guy anymore. And I don't have to be. And you don't have to be trapped in the world of sin that once held you. You're free. That old guy is gone. And now you're free to live for him. And that death is final. Verse 8 says, Now if we died with Christ, we believe we also should live with him. The new life. It's interesting because death is a one-time event. When I said the Lord Jesus Christ, the old John is gone. But the, now the new life is ongoing. It's continuing. Every morning is that new mercy I need in him. Each new day is an opportunity to live for him. It's allowing to work into my life. And folks, we need this more, I think, than ever before because our nation is going the wrong direction so fast. And it appeals to the old man. Our society's telling you, if it feels good, do it. And we're seeing destruction along the way. Pray for those who are dealing with raising kids today. It's the garbage that's being crammed down to, into them. It's confusing them. It's causing them depression. Kids' suicide is increasing. Self-harm is increasing. Confusion, distortion, all these things are all around them. And Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father but by me. Amen. He's the light. I've been cooped up for a week, so i got to get some stuff out. Yeah. <laughs> this is what happens I don't preach for a week. And if I say anything that's wrong, it's the COVID brain. I can, use, I, can ride, I can ride that train now for a long time. And today is just one of those days when we're going to celebrate baptism. 
that we have those who are willing to go into the water as a testimony of their faith of the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ, saying, I'm going to leave the old man behind, and I'm going to come up new and walk into new life. And for us who have already done this, it's a reminder. I always kind of liken it to, you know, you ever go to a wedding? Right? Yay, love weddings. But you go down and you sit and you watch a couple things. You sit there and you got these young couple, sometimes young, sometimes not so young. You know, right? Especially a young couple. And they get up there and they're all starry-eyed. And they're just all in love. You know, you got the guy up front and, and, and the bride comes around the corner and that dun 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 And he's just like, Right? And then the bride comes down the aisle and she's looking up with hope and ambition. And I'm sitting here thinking, you guys have no clue. <laughs> right? They don't know what's in store for them. And that's good. That's good they don't know. They'll figure it out. You know, then they get up there and they say the vows. You know, the richer for poor. Better for worse, so death do you part. My wife reminds me, we said those vows. She says, I owe her some better years. She goes, over the years, it's been a little off. I said, there's no ratio when you said that. But sitting back, I'm watching this these couple, and I'm just like, wow. You know, I was that starry-eyed fool at one point. And my wife looked at me with those those hopes and dreams. And I remember when I made that commitment. Today, as we go into the waters of baptism, I want you to remember the time when you said, Lord, yes, I will follow you. I want you to remember to say, yes, Lord. I remember the time when I went into the waters and I said, that old John is dead. Oh, put your own name in there. Right? That old me is dead. And I want to walk in newness of life. There were within me those hopes and dreams that I had right before kind of life kind of beat you up a little bit. And Lord, help me to live for you. And it's funny because you go to a wedding, you'll see couples. Some of the vows are given and all this other stuff. And you walk up to the audience and oftentimes you'll see couples all of a sudden scoot a little closer. It disturbs us in them. And hopefully today will serve within us. The old me's gone. Left him behind. Washed away in the waters of baptism. And Lord, help me to walk out in newness of life to you. Not go back to where I was. You know, I always thought it would be interesting. Imagine a wedding. And the couple says, oh, you know, do you, I do, you do, you do, and you're done. <laughs> you kiss the bride, then da, 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 and they walk out, and they walk out separate doors and walk out and never see each other again. You're like, that's crazy. Right? The Bible says you forsake all others and start a new life together. Christian, as we come out of the waters of baptism, or when you did come out of the waters of baptism, that was a pledge to leave all the world behind. And Lord, I will serve you. Turn that within you again. Because what this world needs is Jesus. Amen. Amen. And where they're going to see it is through you and through me. Yeah. And if they don't see us living a new life, mm -hmm. then what are we trying to sell them? Right? They're going to see us and we're messed up. Yeah, I am. But it's not about me. It's about Jesus. And if he can love me, he can love you. If he can forgive me, he can forgive you. What can wash away my sins? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. What can make me whole again? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. You guys know the verse, right? Oh, precious is the flow. Help me out. And Makes me white as snow. No other fountain I know. 
nothing but the blood of Jesus. Folks, let it have his perfect work in your life. Live this new life that you said you want to live. That commitment you made when you were baptized to follow him. And these ones who are baptized today, I want you to encourage them. Because you know, as soon as they say, Lord, I want to follow you, Satan's going to be right there trying to mess them up. You guys know that. And this is why our church family is so important, that we come alongside and encourage each other to keep the promises they're making today. So they're not by themselves. Praise God, we have our church family. Who loves us, despite our faults. Who understands our imperfection, because you know what? You're imperfect too. So praise God, we're pressing on together. In a new life. In Him. Let's pray. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you for this morning. This chance to meet together as the body of Christ of the redeemed, of those who have been baptized, Lord, that you, unity we have of spirit, of water. Lord, in a pledge to leave the old life behind, Lord, to live in newness of life. Lord, we can't do it alone. Lord, I need a family to come alongside. Lord, I need a savior who leads me along the way. Lord, help me to follow you. And all God's people said, Amen. Amen. On the back of your hymnal, I have decided to follow Jesus. the world behind with its cares and its woes its confusions, its distortions and Lord help me to follow you the way, the truth and the life Lord help us to follow, stay close Lord we need you we ask this in your name and all God's people said Amen, Amen.